Hi friends, it's Valerie. Welcome back to this week's What's For Dinner. If you are new here, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. And don't forget to leave a like or a comment down below because it really does help my channel. Um, this week's What's For Dinner has got not too many new things. I kind of had to rely on some repeats, some quick things that I knew I could rely on because I was very like short in time. These past couple weeks have been really busy for me. Um, anyways, I know I missed last week's What's For Dinner. Um, but I will include any meals that I had already made during the week into there, into this video so that you get a couple extra. Like I said, nothing too new, but I still want to show you guys everything. Um, we are going to be on vacation next week, so there won't be a what's for dinner then either. I just want to let you know that as well. We're going to be gone during the week. Um, we will be here the first couple days of the week, but I'm going to be packing and all of that. I'm probably not going to be cooking. If by chance I do, I will save it for you for the following week's what's for dinner video. Um, but other than that, let's just get started. I will have the original recipe that I used for this a long time ago um, linked in the description box down below. Um, you're just going to heat up some chicken tenders. I just have these ones here. I'm using less than what they call for in the recipe because it just works better for us. Then to a pot over medium heat, I am adding in one third cup of Frank's hot sauce with a quarter cup of water and one cup of brown sugar. And I'm just going to whisk that all together. Um, I'm going to let this simmer a bit, thicken up, and then I'll remove it from the heat and let it cool down so it can continue to thicken up. Now this is the part where you can really customize anything you want. I am just using up some vegetables I had left over, which was a very small amount of some cherry tomatoes and I had a cucumber, so I sliced that up. Um, and just like I said, any vegetables you'd like. But then we're going to take that sauce we made, pour it over our cooked chicken tenders, and just get that all get that breading coated in the sauce. Um, I didn't use all of it because, I, like I said, I used less chicken, but I will make some chicken maybe for a lunch another day so I'll save that remainder remainder of sauce and um, then just chop it up this could be to your liking as well I do bite-sized small pieces but you can leave it in thicker like long strips if you'd like and any remaining sauce that I still had in that bowl I just poured on top of that um, and the recipe that I'll have linked says like all the things you chop up like romaine and such like I said I'm just doing it how I want to I use bag salad for that I put any other things I like like cucumbers on top I add the chicken I add some shredded cheddar cheese and um, I like to do croutons I just forgot it this time and then I'm just using the Marzetti ranch we love that stuff so much this is definitely one of our favorite go-to salads. It's just got so much good flavor in it. Um, you can definitely change this up with whatever like other things you like in your salads. I have these frozen chipotle salmon burgers and root vegetable fries from Aldi. And I needed to use them up because I'm trying to clear my freezer out. So I figured I'd put them together to make a meal. I wanted a sauce for the Chipotle burgers, and I will have one linked in the description box down below, but it is just going to be something that I loosely followed. Like, I had different ingredients. So, I'm putting about a quarter cup of mayonnaise together with a little bit of lemon juice, about a teaspoon's worth. Um, that's to taste, of course. And then about a little bit of cayenne pepper. I didn't really measure it. I just put a, a nice hefty dash in there. I didn't have any fresh dill, so I used some dried dill and some garlic. And then I just took some of this juice from my pickle jar and just added it in there. That really kicked up that dill taste. I really, really liked that. This sauce was pretty delicious. You can add other things in there as well. I think the recipe says you can add like shallots and basil. Um, I added a little bit of Dijon mustard and just set that aside. I left it in the refrigerator while I worked on the burgers. Kind of want those flavors to like meld together while you're doing this. They don't cook long though. Over medium high heat, I think I had this on. Um, I sprayed a little oil and I put my salmon burgers on there and did about three, four minutes on each side. I do the recommended time that the box says for them from frozen, but I do leave an extra minute or two um, so that they get a little bit more crispy because that's how I like it. Um, I serve this up pretty simple on a bun and I put some lettuce and that sauce and then I had those root vegetable fries. We love those root vegetable fries. I was like the first time having them and of course they were a limited time thing so I had them in the freezer but um, they're not going to have them again now or they might come back you know, eventually but uh, they were so good I wish I had a couple of extra bags in the freezer. Um, but all in all, we always love the salmon burgers. They're a quick, easy, and delicious meal. I'm a huge fan of chorizo with my tostadas, so I'm cooking up this package of chorizo here. But you can do chicken, beef, whatever your preference is. Um, you can leave them 
without any meat at all and just use beans as your protein. I like to do a mixture of the chorizo and the beans, so I cook that up. Uh, once it's all cooked up, I will add in one can of refried beans, and I just kind of break those apart. And once they start to warm up, they'll become easier to smooth out. So then I can just take a spoon and mix those chorizo and the beans together. Um, I really just think that that makes like a really good taste. I love refried beans and you just add that little extra flavor and spice from the chorizo. And of course you can try to like remove any excess grease from the chorizo. It doesn't bother me. Once it mixes in with the beans, it kind of like actually rehydrates them a lot better. So it's just a preference for my liking. Next, I just had some of my favorite toppings. Um, I just like iceberg lettuce, diced up tomatoes, and a like extra sharp cheddar cheese. We absolutely love tostados like this. Like I always feel like a tostado like this is just so quick to throw together, but you're left with results that just make you satisfied and happy. Like I really, really love these like flavor combinations, and I serve that with some Spanish rice on the side. So I've made this Greek like crock pot chicken in the past and quite a few of my subscribers really love this meal it's definitely one of my favorites and someone brought it up to me recently so i was like oh i have to make that again so um because i have made it in the past like six months i will just leave a link to the video that i made it in and but i'm just giving you an overview here of it all in the crock pot and um i serve this with just like one of those uncle ben's wild rice pouches i had some beets i need to use up right now so i put those with some ranch i had those mini toastable non breads from aldi those are amazing I put, toasted one of those up, put some feta on top of that chicken when it was all done. This is so good. We are huge fans of this chicken like big time, but I'm a big fan of like Greek style flavors in general. So, oh man, that's just so amazing. Um, I'm a big fan of Kalamata olives and if you are too, add the whole jar. It's, it's probably a little bit more than what the recipe calls for, but um, they are so good in this. I'm starting here with my instant pot. I've got the liner and I am adding to that one and a half cups of chicken broth with one cup of heavy cream and one to two teaspoons worth of some minced garlic and then some salt and pepper to taste. I'm just kind of eyeing that. You could add more later if you need to. Um, I never stir pastas, but I stir this together really quick before I add the pasta so I can get those flavors, like the garlic all spread out and whatnot. And then I'll add in my 8 ounces of dry pasta. I'm using ziti like the recipe that I'll have linked for you calls for, but you could use penne or some other pasta if you need to. Um, I cook that on high pressure for 6 minutes, and then I let it naturally release its pressure for an additional 6 minutes. And then I quick release any remaining pressure. And then to that, I'm adding one cup of Parmesan cheese that is shredded and then a half a cup of mozzarella cheese. And then I'm taking one cup of red pasta sauce. I'm using this um, Pioneer Woman, like the vegetable one. I really like that one, like, like a chunky garden. It's super good. So uh, I just added that in there and gave it all a good stir. Just let those cheeses begin to melt and then you can give it a stir again. And this sauce will thicken up as the cheese melts. This is one of my favorite, like, easy throw-together Instant Pot meals. I love a good cheesy bowl of pasta. Um, it's, like, such a comfort food, and I don't mind having, like, a no-meat type of day. And then I just serve this with a side Caesar salad. I'm starting this off by making the mixture that's going to go on the chicken. I didn't hit recording time, but to a bowl, I'm adding in a quarter cup of butter. Um, it's supposed to be softened. Mine, I had to put in the microwave so it melted a little bit more. And then if you don't have salt in your lemon pepper seasoning, um, add a teaspoon of salt. I may have done a half a teaspoon and then two tablespoons of the lemon pepper seasoning. This is the one I use. I got it at Dollar Tree. And then to that, I'll also add in one eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And I did a little bit of garlic powder, even though the recipe doesn't call for it. And then just mix that all together to get all those like um, seasonings combined. I stuck this in the refrigerator while I was working on the other thing so that it can solidify a little bit more. And then I'm just slicing up a lemon into some thin slices. Next, I've sprayed the bottom of a 9 by 13 baking dish with a little bit of cooking oil. And I'm going to take my lemon slices and put them like spread across the bottom as evenly as I can without however many slices you get out of your lemon and you know this is going to be the base for under our chicken so place it how you think your chicken's going to kind of fit so you can you know they can all get some flavor 
So our recipe said to use four boneless skinless chicken breasts or some bone-in chicken thighs but I'm using chicken breasts and I didn't have four that were defrosted so I had two and then some like small piece I don't know they cut it at the butcher and they must have like cut it all weird but I still used it up in this and I placed it on top of the lemon slices and I divided that mixture um like on top of all the chicken here now in the end this was a little bit strong for me so maybe you know like with that fourth piece of chicken it would have been thinned out a little bit more because that would have spread out a little bit but um it, it was fine still so if, if this is a situation that you're in the reason that it's fine is that it still absorbs a, like a good amount of flavor from this and the lemons underneath but it is easily wiped off so you're not left with too much like lemon pepper on top because I'm a huge lover of lemon but even for me it was just like bitefuls of like straight lemon pepper seasoning and it was kind of strong so I easily just wiped it off actually I put it to the side and I just like scraped it off so that if I wanted to dip my pieces of like bites of chicken into it I could for a little bit extra flavor and I baked this at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 to 30 minutes until I got an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And I hadn't had like angel hair pasta roni in forever. Um, so I made some of that and I did some air fried asparagus with this. And all in all, this was a good meal. Just like I said, that seasoning on top could have been very overbearing even for someone like me who loves lemon. I have been so busy recently, but thank goodness for my Instant Pot. It really does save me in a pinch. Um, to the bottom of my Instant Pot, I added a pound of ground beef on the saute function. And then I just cooked that until it was browned. You can add some seasonings, um, salt, pepper, garlic powder. I did onion powder and some garlic powder. The recipe that I'll have linked for you doesn't call for that, but I like to season my meat. And then once there's no more pink remaining, I did drain the remaining grease, put it back in the Instant Pot, and then I topped it off with uh, 8 ounces worth of rotini pasta. And then on top of that, I'm adding a tablespoon of chili powder, one and a half teaspoons of cumin, and then two cups of beef broth. And you're not stirring any of this. Make sure not to stir. I'm using the beef better than bouillon, so I start it in water. That's what you see me breaking up in there. And then you'll top that with a 10 ounce can of enchilada sauce, like red enchilada sauce. I had a bigger can, so I had to measure that out. And then I just press down the pasta into the bottom. If you feel like you need a little bit more liquid, you can add some more broth or water. You just want to make sure that that's covered. And then take a can of black beans that are rinsed and drained and put that on top again not stirring anything place the lid on top of that then the recipe says to cook this on four minutes on high pressure i like to do five minutes i just it's my preferred like doneness for the pasta and then we're going to let that natural release for five minutes as well I like to snack on like those love beads, but I had a stock up of them. Didn't realize the date was coming up, so I had a lot of beads to use up. Um, so I put some here with some ranch, like I like to have them. And I serve this pasta. A uh, little tip is that it can be a little spicy depending on, you know, the sauce preference that you use. Uh, mild, medium, hot, whatever. Um, so use your spice preference. And you could also like cut down on the chili powder. Uh, you can not use it at all. You can replace it with taco seasoning. Um, but I like to serve a nice scoop of sour cream on top. Not only does it taste good, but it does cut down that heat a little bit, um, and I really enjoyed it that way. On this night, we wanted to try something new, and we have this place that's newer, like, local to us, and it's called Eat Fantastic, and we both got some burgers. Um, I got the Mamba burger. My boyfriend got, like, a pastrami burger, and then we got some zucchini fries. This is just some of the, like, aesthetic. It's a cute little patio area. They've got, like, nice string lights um, and another view of the food. This is, like, these burgers were amazing, and the zucchini fries, we're both huge zucchini fry fans, and these were some of the best we've ever had. Um, I wanted to try some of their drinks, but we had already gotten Starbucks, so, um, we'll have to try those next time, because we're definitely going to be going back here. I'm starting this off by cooking up some shrimp. I'm putting some sesame oil in the bottom of my skillet. I'm taking my shrimp, um, and I'm just gonna place that in there now you could use chicken um, whatever your preference is for protein go ahead and do that but I had some shrimp I wanted to use so that's what I'm doing I put it in the skillet um, I put some squeezed ginger and squeezed garlic I'm just kind of like 
letting that get coated, cook up. It just doesn't take more than five minutes to cook up the shrimp. But um, I'm also adding in some soy sauce. Now, none of this, this is just all to I. Like, some soy sauce, a little bit of, I think I had oyster sauce, and then some little bit of brown sugar to make it a little bit sweeter. And I am tossing that all to coat those shrimp. I will let those just saute for a moment in that sauce. Then I will remove them from that skillet, leaving the sauce behind like as much of it as I can here. Um, I'll just take the shrimps and set them aside. And I sliced up some baby bella mushrooms. Um, it was just kind of like what I, I didn't thought we'd want in our ramen. I sliced those up. I'm putting them in that sauce to also just get coated and cook down in that sauce. They'll soak up some of that flavor. Now we really love mushrooms, but if you don't, you can sub any other vegetables. This is such a forgiving dish, like whatever vegetables you like, you could probably get away with putting in there. I have some of these like matchstick carrots. I put them in some boiling water. This is where I'm going to boil the ramen, so I'm adding that in there. I also had a few dumplings left, not many, it was just a little bit left at the bottom of the bag. I'm adding those into the boiling water as well. And then after I let those cook for just a moment, like a minute to two minutes max, then I'm adding in my ramen. Uh, this is just top ramen packets I had to use up. Um, I like the shin ramen a lot though so uh, whatever ramen you have or like you can put in there cook it to the package directions and then when it's about done like a minute till it's done I add in some spinach again I like to pack these with extra vegetables you can use bok choy that would be amazing and then I went ahead and drained uh, the ramen and all that I drained all that water out you wouldn't drain your water if you're making your broth using bouillon or something like that. But I found this ramen broth from Aldi and it's a limited time thing so I grabbed it to try it out and I wanted to use it this time so I that's why I drained it and I'm pouring that whole carton of broth into the bottom of the pan just to warm it up and then once it's warming up I'll go ahead and add the mushrooms that we cooked up um, any other vegetables you've cooked up add them in now as well as you know your cooked up ramen what, this is of course once your broth is warmed and I just give that all a good stir and I tasted it it did need a little bit more flavoring for that broth for me so I just took really quick one of those packets to come with the top ramen and added it in I know they're not the best for you but one packet was not going to be the end of the world and it just upped that flavor to my liking y'all I could literally eat this every day I love ramen so so much um, I put a little bit of the um, chili onion crunch from Trader Joe's on top for a little bit of extra spice and I put some soft boiled eggs I love a yolky egg um, I do six minutes for my soft boiled eggs you can do you know completely firm eggs whatever your preference is put some green onions some sesame seeds and this was just so delicious. Thanks so much for watching, friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all are having a great day.